what are the responsibilities of a management company? Well, a management company manages all the day-to-day -day operations of the HOA. So this means invoicing for HOA dues, collecting HOA dues, uh, keeping accounts of, of who's paid their dues, how late they are, you know, everybody's account, um, managing any maintenance requests to common elements, any violations of uh, condo documents, um, you know, working with third-party vendors to fix those maintenance issues, uh, making sure the landscaping or the groundskeeping, snow removal, all that stuff gets done in a, legally in a, in a timely manner. Um, work, you know, coordinating with legal counsel for you know legal issues that the association might be faced with, filing insurance claims um, when there's a loss or of some sort. Um, there's so many things that the management company runs point on or quarterbacks for the association, and. Many times there's many vendors involved in coordinating, you know, multiple vendors for one association. And some associations think about going self-managed instead of having a management company. And there are pros and cons to this. Um, usually it's more effective or more feasible for smaller associations, but um, we're finding ways to streamline this process so that larger and larger associations can consider self-managing, especially with you know the increase in technology and some of the programs we are implementing and, and help in training people involved in HOA management or even board members to, to participate in, they can be more and more effective at you know, self-managing an association. Um, we work at streamlining our vendors, streamlining who's on property doing stuff so that more people are familiar with the property, they're familiar with the unit owners, they're familiar with the community, their vehicles, you know, what their preferences are. And the more integrated the management company is with the, the, the community that they're managing, um, the better the results will be. And so where some management companies get into trouble is they get so big that they have very little participation or you know, their feet are on the ground in the community, you know, very infrequently. Maybe they just have, you know, been part of board meetings uh, via Zoom or remotely, and they, they've only been on property one or two times. Um, that is really a, a recipe for disaster for a lot of these associations because um, they really don't have a good pulse on what's going on in the community. Our approach is, is much different. We are on site uh, very frequently and a lot of that is because we do a lot of the services that the association might need in house, uh, whether it's maintenance or construction or you know sometimes landscaping, you know, snow removal, all that stuff. We have the ability to service those contracts in house. So we have our team on site all the time, you know, three days a week, four days a week. We know all the unit owners, we know where they live, we know their names, we know what kind of car they drive. We know when a car that's not there is parked in their space because we, we are very well integrated with the community. And that's part of our model and I think that's part of what's made us so successful in this space is we have a high attention to detail but also uh, a personal touch where we know every member in the communities we work with. Um, and we work very closely with the residents there to make sure we have a good pulse of what's going on and if there's a you know a specific unit owner or tenant that is problematic that, that we know who they are and kind of the nature of that situation we can keep an eye on it keep tabs on it and um, and navigate those situations accordingly there's so much that goes on in one of these communities that it really is important to have a high amount of involvement to be successful in it and so that's where sometimes a self-managed community can really have a competitive advantage because the self-managed community, usually it's unit owners who live on site, they're there all the time, they know all their neighbors, they know what's going on, and they have a good pulse on what's going on. Um, where they lack is generally in the legalities of how an HOA needs to be run, um, you know, the condo documentation, certain, uh, certain clauses that should be in specific contracts like a, um, let's say a plot, you know, snow removal, an indemnity clause or hold harmless so that if, you know, they have a plowing contractor servicing their property, someone slips and falls, that any lawsuits would be directed towards the plowing contractor, not the association. These are little nuances that it might be overlooked with a self-managed association just because that's not what they do every day. That's not what their expertise is. And so we have, we've developed a model 
where we can work with these aso smaller associations as uh, a, a consultant for specific items and we can help walk them through certain things. Um, we can offer full service management to um, you know, associations in Connecticut, which is you know, local to us, or uh, we can do a training program. And, and we have two training programs, one for self-managed associations to help them be really effective at um, you know, managing their association just as a board of directors or, or leveraging certain um, skill sets of unit owners or people that are already a part of the community to be successful in managing their association and giving them, training them in the legal nuances or the things that they have to watch out for at a high level that typically a property manager would be aware of. Um, and we can kind of coach them through that. We do a training and then a one year coaching afterwards and we can do a, a, a maintenance coaching program as well. Um, and then the other uh, avenue of training that we do is for someone who um, wants to see change in their community. They're willing to make the, the career switch to property management or HOA management. And uh, they're starting with maybe a community they have a vested interest in and then want to grow from there. That's how we got to where we are today. And um, Basically, we're just training in, in what needs to happen for that to for, for that individual or that you know small company to be successful in what they're trying to do, and um, you know we find that these smaller companies or people starting out, people who have more vested interest in the community, are many times much more successful, and and the feeling of the community, it, it, there's one of like loyalty and friendship, and they realize that you know this individual is here to try to help them. Um, and they see a marked change from when a big management company was managing them to someone who's just starting out and the, you know, all they're doing is making sure that the needs of that community are met. Um, and so we have a training program to kind of show uh, people aspiring to get into that space um, how to do it and how we did what we did that, that you know, made us successful and you know, kind of our failures along the way and kind of where we fell short and where we've adapted and changed to be more and more successful as time has gone on. And our, um, our approach is unique, it's different because we didn't have any previous experience with uh, working for a larger management company before we got into this space. Um, our experience was as a, a unit owner, uh, coming from the perspective as a unit owner, someone who's invested in a community and realized the community was going downhill because of just poor management. And it wasn't that the management company was necessarily bad, they were just too big to really provide you know, a, a tailored or focused service um, and the community was suffering as a result. And so our entire approach has been from a different perspective, different uh, than what a lot of these larger companies are doing. And we find that the result is the experience for our clients and the people living in the community is much better, much higher because they're, they're receiving personalized service and the services they're receiving are tailored to their needs and the needs of the community. And, um, and be, it's because of our success that we decided that uh, we want to implement a licensing model where you know, people who want to do it either for their own association, like a self-managed type situation, or they want to get into HOA management because they feel it's you know, something they're passionate about or might be good at, um, we can show them our system and license them in our system of doing things and and really give them the keys to the kingdom and how we did what we did um, because you know we want to share that with with anybody who we think can benefit or anybody who thinks that they can benefit from what we're doing um, and I, I think it'll be for the benefit of everybody and and everybody's investments will, will improve because you have people who care about these communities more um, doing more for them these are some things to consider when trying to make the decision between self-managed associations and hiring a professional management company to help you.